In this tutorial, I'll show you how to take advantage of the usage analytics features in Azure Monitor Application Insights to get visibility into the behavior and usage patterns of users accessing your apps. Application Insights provides the APM capabilities in Azure Monitor by tracking server response times, application performance metrics and failures, performing availability testing, dependency tracing, and much more. Additionally, usage information is also collected to augment these monitoring capabilities. And the type of usage data I'm referring to here consists of statistics on the numbers of users, sessions, events, and also contains browser version, OS version, and location info, all coming from browser-side JavaScript instrumentation. First, I'll look at the usage info available in the context of monitoring my application. In my day-to-day -day operations, I typically look at availability, performance, failures, and alerts. I'll start by investigating failures that took place over the last several hours. This blade shows failures grouped by operations, dependencies, exceptions, and roles. And on this screen, among other criteria, I can filter by operation and exception type. These filters limit my dataset to a subset of operations that will be shown under the drill into section. And in this example, it's about 140 operations that match my previous selections. Now I can select a single sample operation to see its end-to-end -end transaction view. This view includes a Gantt chart showing where my transaction spent its time and includes things like the exception details and the call stack. But what I'd really like to point out is the usage information that will be available in the related item section in the bottom right. You can see a timeline of page views and events just for this session that the transaction is a part of, showing any other events or page views. And you can get a similar timeline view for the user showing other events performed and other pages viewed by the user. You can also see what happens before and after this type of request in user flows. I'll cover user flows in much more detail later on, but basically it's a flow diagram of sessions and what took place before and after the operation that we drilled into. Or lastly, for this part of the demo, you can see all the telemetry for the user session, including standard page views, custom events, properties and attributes, dependencies, and much more. This type of information is available in end-to-end -end transaction view, whether you started in the failures blade, as I did, or if you got there from the application map or the performance blade. Another workflow where usage information is very valuable is when responding to a performance degradation or an outage event. As part of the response to that event, you'd want to know how many users were affected. So this leads us to smart detections. These are automated warnings about performance problems and failures in your app. And depending on the type of detection displayed, as I'm showing here, there'll be a count of the affected users to help you gauge the extent or impact on your users. In the first detection, hundreds of users were affected, but in this other example, only six users were. I'll now move on to the performance blade to show how browser-side instrumentation can also provide insights into commonalities across slow transactions. First, I'll switch this toggle to the browser selection, and this view shows all browser operations sorted by their duration and response time. I can select a request by name and select a range of durations in the histogram over in the top right. Based on these selections, the insight shown below will update to reflect things like trends in performance, but also includes groups of transaction by common properties, including those properties coming from our browser side instrumentation. Items such as geographic location, browser version, and OS version will be listed here. You can also easily navigate to user views from the application map. The app map shows all of your app components grouped by instances. It shows the dependencies between them, but it also shows availability tests, and most importantly for this demo, client-side information. I can use this to pivot from my app map to the stats collected on the users of the app. Now that I've covered some places where this usage info is available in the context of App Insights investigation experiences, I'd like to focus on some of the out-of-the-box basic workflows, starting with usage analysis views. With these views, we want you to be able to answer common usage questions, such as which web pages and features were the most popular by numbers of users, sessions, and events, where do users typically drop out of a website or a business funnel, how often and at what time intervals do users return, and additionally, we can also investigate if there's a correlation or relationship between end user experience, for example, how long a page takes to load, 
and user behavior. Does the user remain engaged and return? With this type of information available to you, you can better determine when and where to assign development resources and align your development strategy with the desired business outcomes. Before I jump into user experience, just one quick note on how the data that we're about to view is examined and collected. User and session IDs are automatically identified by the default server-side agent or SDK and are mapped to the corresponding page views collected by the JavaScript instrumentation on the client side. This is used to track user activity. For most web apps, this process is done automatically using browser cookies. But if your user IDs are not automatically identified with our default instrumentation, you can manually send back the user IDs and session IDs and telemetry from code and even track authenticated users. To start, I'll return to the App Insights Blade and navigate to Events under Usage. These usage stats include out of the box, lots of detail by default. Items like the number of page views and requests, page titles, URLs, the browser version, the operating system version, the application, and even geographic information. But you can take things a step further to view custom events and properties. If these have been implemented in code using the SDK on the server side or by client side JavaScript. For example, if a user clicks on a specific button to access a page or upload or submit a file, that can be considered a custom event. Or as a second example, you can send back custom e-commerce attributes such as status silver, gold, platinum, or so on, as part of your page payload so you can analyze usage and performance by the user tier. Now we'll step through the options available under usage. For each of these items listed here, I'll discuss the type of questions that can be answered. First, I'll start with users. The type of question answered here is, how many users viewed a specific set of pages or performed a specific set of user-defined events over a chosen time frame? Additionally, the user count shown here can be displayed or split by any of the properties that we talked about earlier. For example, how many users during the last day or 24 hours clicked on the Create New Ticket button? I'll choose to display this over time in one hour intervals before I go ahead and split by state or province. From here, I have some options. I can choose to switch my visualization from a bar chart to a stacked area chart. And we also have the option to pin this view to a dashboard or view or edit the query used to create this view in log analytics, or we can reuse the query in a workbook. Lastly, I can scroll down and I can evaluate meeting my users. This will give me the option to choose random users or look at the most active users to see similar details like we saw before at the end of the end-to-end -end transaction view on the actions performed by that one user. Next, I'll move on to sessions. The question answered here is how many sessions in a chosen time frame included a set of pages or events that we get to define. For example, during the last 24 hours, how many sessions included hitting the home page? First, I'll select my time range and then I'll select my page of interest. But this time around, I'll apply two splitting options. I'll also add a second split by operating system. And this time I'll leave the default bar chart as my visualization. And we also have the option here of directly pinning this view to a dashboard or reusing the underlying query. Now I'll move on to events. Recall that events here refer to the out of the box page views that we track by page title or user defined custom events that you've created using our SDKs. This view answers questions such as how many times or instances was a specific event performed during the selected time frame, but it also has the options to change the splitting and modify the visualization just as I did in the last two demos. As an example, for the last seven days, how many times was the edit ticket button clicked by a user? But this time I'll split by application version. This is useful when we're monitoring mobile apps where users are responsible for completing their own upgrades. These event statistics can also be used as a starting point for grabbing a sample and performing a deep dive investigation. So I can drill down to the end-to-end -end transaction view, which shows all the dependencies and where the time is spent and if there are any errors. This is usually one of the final steps in a performance or failure investigation, but you can also quickly get to this point from the usage views using events. Moving on to funnels, 
These allow you to understand how users progress through a series of steps on your app or website. The basic question answered here is what are the conversion rates as users navigate from one page on the website to another? The most common use case for funnels applies to e-commerce transactions, where a business evaluates how many users go from, let's say, the home page to the sale link to the item list to add to cart to checkout. But this approach can also be used on any user-defined combination of pages or events. Propose the series of steps that you expect the user to follow, then view the percentage of traffic that actually goes through those steps. For this demo, I'll use home page as step one, tickets as step two, and then we'll add detail as step three. Now, once we've entered the steps of the funnel, we can go ahead and save it and evaluate the results. We can see the count of users at each step and the percentage that's been converted that moves on to the next step. Insights on the right here allow me to see what happened before and after each step when I select the step in the funnel itself. Now we'll move on to some advanced usage analytics. In contrast to funnels, which are very narrowly focused and highlight conversion rates around some expected behavior, user flows offer a more generic picture of where users go next. Instead of specifying a series of steps, user flows requires only the first entry point to construct the entire visualization for the subsequent series of pages and events that were used. I'll go ahead and set my previous steps to zero, and now the home page will become my first entry point. From here, you can get a quick high-level view of all the user paths from many sessions at the same time. This view allows you to discern where do users go next from a specific set of pages on your site onto the next step? Where do users typically leave your site? Where do you have dropouts or sessions ending? And are there any places where users perform the same set of actions repeatedly or loop through the same set of pages over and over again? This type of diagram is called a sand key diagram, typically used in engineering to show the flow or consumption of some resource, but they're also gaining popularity within APM teams for displaying user sessions or flows or breaking up and identifying processing time. From here, I'll move on to retention. Retention shows a sliding four week window with the percentage of users that return to your site or app or return to a specific page or event in the app. The questions answered here are how often do users return to your site, what's your repeat user rate, which pages on your site are the stickiest or have the highest adoption rate. Let's look at users who use tickets and then returned to the tickets page over the last month. In general, we can see that just over a third of users who hit the ticket page return the following week. You have some flexibility here. You can change the starting and returning events to anything you'd like to view this type of metrics in the list in this table with the return rates over the last four weeks. Finally, we'll spend a moment on cohorts. These allow you to define a set of users or sessions by selecting some predefined parameters, or you can actually use KQL queries for a more detailed definition. In either case, you can use cohorts as inputs to the users, sessions, and events views that we've shown earlier. This gives you greater flexibility in analysis by pre-populating just the users of interest before you continued with creating the custom charts, graphs, and making other selections like we showed before. Here, I'll edit one of the existing templates to create my own definition of engaged users. An engaged user is someone who's used the app a certain number of days within a specific time window. But I'm only concerned with users that have been editing tickets, so I'll add additional filters to limit this to my engaged user set that have either edited the page or clicked the edit button. Once this is saved, I can reuse it in events to see what are the actions these users have done in common. Many of the workflows shown earlier have been very dynamic and required the operator to navigate the UI making selections and drilling down where appropriate. However, we have a number of predefined workbook templates that highlight interesting usage information in the form of interactive reports. I'll navigate over to my workbooks gallery to show you some of what's available. There are workbooks available for failure analysis, evaluating performance and usage, retention, as well as business hypotheses. But I would like to focus on application performance index. 
This workbook is based on AppDex, an open standard for measuring and comparing end user experience by setting up minor and major thresholds. As shown here, the minor threshold is defined by variable t, and the major threshold is 4 times t, 4t. Users that experience a response time between 0 and t are said to be satisfied, those with response time between t and 4t are described as tolerating, and those with response time above 4t are considered to be frustrated. One of the benefits of this workbook is that you get to set the range of operations you'd like to filter on and the value that you want to use for your threshold. Here, I'll set my operation as the report index request and I'll set my threshold t to one second. So in my case, users with response time of less than one will consider them satisfied between one and four seconds would be tolerating and above four seconds, we consider them to be frustrated. With these thresholds set, it looks like most of my users are going to fall in the satisfied bucket. With only a few dozen users moving over to the tolerating and the frustrated bucket, hence the great AppDex score of 0.9. AppDex is on a scale of 0 to 1, so we're really close to perfect here. Also, keep in mind that these workbooks are completely customizable and we have the full flexibility of the underlying Log Analytics platform. Here, I've drilled into Log Analytics and we can see the existing query. We can edit this query or write entirely new ones to modify or to create new workbooks from scratch. Thanks for watching this tutorial on the usage analysis capabilities of Azure Monitor Application Insights. These features help you understand how people use your app and provide the basis for data-driven decisions in upcoming development cycles.